Hello, everyone. Thanks a lot for coming to this session. It's the last one. I appreciate you sticking it through. As was announced, my name is Lukonde Mwila. You can also call me Luke. And I'm a product manager in the Amazon EKS team. I'm going to be speaking to you about managing your AWS cloud infrastructure using Kubernetes APIs, specifically using AWS controllers for Kubernetes, also known as ACK. So perhaps by show of hands, are any of you familiar with ACK or are already using it in your application environments? OK, great. So we got one person there. All right. And whether it's experimentation phase or production usage, anyone else? There we go. All right. Great. Well, let's get into this. Now, for those of you that are completely new to it, ACK is an open source project that allows you to manage the full life cycle of your AWS cloud resources using Kubernetes APIs, specifically based on the, on the Kubernetes controller pattern. And controllers in Kubernetes are responsible for continuously watching both the live state as well as the desired state of your, re of your Kubernetes resources or infrastructure. And in the case that there is any divergence between those two states, it's the controller's job to make sure that it reconciles them. So making sure that live state always matches the desired state. And this model essentially can now be extended to the management of your AWS cloud infrastructure. The AWS APIs are imperative, but this gives them a self-healing mechanism by using this Kubernetes-based approach or model. And today we have 50 uh, ACK controllers that are generally available. And the way ACK works is there is a dedicated controller for every AWS managed service that is currently supported by ACK. We also have a few other controllers that are still in a preview state. Now, we're really excited about the increasing interest, adoption, and experimentation that's taking place with ACK. Because essentially, it affirms uh, our objectives with this particular project. But the question does come up. Why have another tool or avenue for managing your cloud resources when there are already others that exist out there? And this is an important question that we do have to answer. So we're continuously monitoring the usage patterns of what customers are essentially trying to accomplish, as well as how they're trying to accomplish it. So let's quickly consider these two questions. What are customers trying to do, and how are they trying to do it? For the first one, well, the answer to that is customers are essentially trying to deliver stable software faster in order to drive business value. As for the second question, how are they trying to accomplish it? By creating productivity workflows that support this primary objective. And ACK is a solution that essentially helps customers with the how. Now, you might argue that, to some degree, that's a surface level answer. What exactly does it mean to create a productivity workflow? What does that look like in the software development life cycle? Well, essentially, what teams are trying to do in many cases is to create an internal platform. And this platform is essentially an environment that is designed to enable application developers in their day-to-day -day workflow for developing and deploying software to a runtime environment along with all the resource dependencies that it needs. And that's where AWS Cloud Resources also comes in. And I'll delve into that shortly. But we have to ask the question, why is, where does Kubernetes fit into this? So a trend and usage pattern that we're also seeing is that increasingly teams are building their platforms based on Kubernetes and also want to standardize on a Kubernetes uh, workflow. And the key drivers are these three items that I've highlighted over here. It has a declarative model. And so essentially, teams can now describe the desired outcome for their entire application environment or stack. So that's the application resource definitions, as well as any infrastructure dependencies that that application should be running on. Instead of following a procedural or imperative approach, which is highly susceptible to misconfigurations, you can essentially have a configuration file that defines or declares exactly what you want your environment to look like. So this is one key driver. The second one is continuous reconciliation, which is essentially enabled or empowered by the controller pattern, which I've already described. And so the, with continuous reconciliation, you essentially have a self-healing mechanism to your environment, your entire environment, both the application resources as well as the infrastructure. And the third one is its extensibility. So out the box, Kubernetes has native resources and data types. 
but there may be scenarios in which you have custom requirements or use case specific requirements, and you can extend the Kubernetes API beyond the native data types with custom resource definitions. So these three are key drivers for why teams are adopting Kubernetes as the foundation or substrate for their platform, as well as using it for their workflow. Now, what this looks like from an application perspective is you typically have various resources that you would use in order for your application to function as per norm once it gets deployed. You have a deployment resource, an ingress, a service, a service account, a config map, and a secret. And this isn't an exhaustive list. This is just to give you an example. And each one of these is necessary for your application to function as expected, uh, depending on the specific purpose or role that it fulfills. Now, what normally happens in the context of teams building a platform and development teams consuming that platform is the platform team will essentially design things in such a way that they use those Kubernetes resource types that I just walked, out, walked through, the deployment, the secret, the config map, et cetera, as primitives or low-level building blocks. And so in order to make the life easier for application developers, because again, the objective for, for developers and using the platform is to make their lives a whole lot easier. So they'll abs the platform team will essentially abstract a lot of these low-level primitives so that application developers don't necessarily need to take on the cognitive load of understanding the details of Kubernetes and how it works. And so in many cases, you'll find that those primitives at a low level over there, as you can see in the diagram, and then above that will be custom resources, essentially, which are based on custom resource definitions which essentially group or compose those low-level primitives so that teams can then instantiate or, cre or create uh, their application environments based on those low-level primitives. But what they have available to them is an abstraction of it, and they're only interacting with a, an interface that has um, variables or values that makes their life a whole lot easier to create the environment that they want. Now. Before, I showed a diagram that covered the different application uh, resources that you typically have for your Kubernetes application. But that's not the full picture. In many cases, what teams are also going to be doing is they are going to need infrastructure resources that their application relies on. For example, a DynamoDB database or an RDS database. It could be an S3 bucket, IAM resources, and the list goes on. And one challenge that teams typically face is when there is a fragmented workflow for creating the application environment, and by that I mean you have a particular workflow for creating your application resources and, entirely, and an entirely separate one for creating your cloud resources, this makes it difficult for the consumers of the platform, in, w in which case this is the application developers. They're having to deal with two separate workflows in order for them to create their application environment, and that impedes velocity it also makes it very difficult from a cognitive perspective because there are scenarios in which application developers now have to start juggling different standards, tooling, or languages, and that works against the objective of the platform, which, as I mentioned earlier again, is all about making the life easier for an application developer to design and deploy their application to the runtime environment. So the big thing that comes into play over here is how do you unify the entire process of both application resources as well as cloud resources. And this is, way, this is where ACK fits in. You no longer have to use a separate workflow or approach for creating your cloud resources. Instead, you can use the same Kubernetes-based approach or the Kubernetes resource model for defining both application and infrastructure resources. And your entire stack now uses a single workflow, unifying the process and making it easier for the consumers as well as the creators and maintainers of the platform. So I hope this diagram is clear enough uh, from where you're seated. But essentially, this shows the process and what it looks like. So the relatively dark blue block over there at the top that both the platform team and development team are interacting with. So remember, the platform team is the creator of that system, and the development team is consuming that system. And so what we have now is there is one workflow, a Kubernetes-based workflow, for the entire application environment or stack, which is the objective that we have down over here. 
And I do have a dividing line in there just to show that there are still two, essentially, two segments to this. There is the application layer, and there's the infrastructure layer. But now, in our Kubernetes resources, we've got a deployment resource over there, which is typically used to essentially define the application that should be running in the environment. But in addition to that, now we have a bucket custom resource, an RDS database custom resource, and an IAM custom resource. And each of these is essentially being monitored by a different controller in your Kubernetes environment. Now, the deployment controller is native to your Kubernetes cluster that comes out the box in, as part of the control plane. But you would have to install the AWS uh, controllers for Kubernetes. So in this case, you can see there are three ACK controllers over there, each one for the different services, S3, RDS, and IAM. And each of those controllers is essentially watching the custom resource. And once that resource is created, it will essentially take on the role of creating that in your AWS environment. Now, as I mentioned, so a key thing here is the benefit of unifying this entire workflow and process. And the challenge that you face when you have this fragmented are items like this. It slows down infrastructure provisioning for developers. Uh, in many cases, where you don't have such a unified system, that is where your application developers typically may follow a different model. For example, whether it's creating a ticket uh, and then describing the infrastructure that they need, and that slows down things because they have to wait until they get that infrastructure created in the exact way that they need it before they can actually deploy their application to that environment. In addition to that, there is infrastructure auditing. The more that you have to juggle different approaches for creating your infrastructure, the harder it is to consolidate things and actually monitor it and make sure that you don't have redundant infrastructure that's been created. It's easier to standardize on best practices as well when you're using one unified approach. Not to mention, uh, when you have a fragmented approach, it makes the entire experience incoherent for de developing or rather delivering the application and its infrastructure. And the last one here is maintenance and use of the platform as well is more complex. The more technologies and standards that you, that you end up having in this amalgamation or system. All right, so now I do want to segue to a common approach that customers are using uh, with, that have already adopted AWS controllers for Kubernetes in their environments. And a key aspect or angle of that is with GitOps. By show of hands, how many of you are familiar with GitOps? OK, great. We've got a couple of people. Right, and so GitOps essentially is a model that allows you to automate continuous delivery and the change control process of your infrastructure. And it uses Git as the source of truth. In, in many cases, uh, teams are using Argo CD. It is not the only solution. There is also Flux CD. But this is an example of the kind of approach or flow that teams are using to deliver their application as well as their applications as well as their infrastructure. Uh, this approach really enables a self-service model, which is one of the other key objectives with uh, having a platform. And so you'll find that uh, the application developer, which we have right down over here, the application developer will typically have some kind of a configuration file that describes the intended outcome that they want for both their application as well as the infrastructure layer. And then that is essentially reviewed by the platform team. And once that has gone through that process, and provided that all things are well, then that can then be committed to a particular branch or merged into a particular branch. And then your GitOps solution, like Argo CD in this case, is continuously watching that branch as the source of truth. And the GitOps solution is essentially continuously watching that GitOps repository and that particular branch as the source of truth or the intent-based configurations for the environment that it should be deploying to. And so Argo CD will see the change that has just been merged. And based on that, it will also compare with the live infrastructure. And so following that same controller pattern, it is looking to see what is the live state and what is the desired state. And if it sees that there is a difference there, then it will reconcile it and essentially make sure that both uh, the application layer as well as the infrastructure layer gets deployed to your cluster's environment based on what has been configured. Before I switch over to a demo, just to give you an uh, to show you what this can look like, I want to highlight some of the uh, benefits of using GitOps with ACK. So as I mentioned earlier, it unifies both the application and cloud resource management workflow. So 
I am aware of several teams or customers that are already benefiting from GitOps, but specifically for their application layer. Now, again, if you if you have a disjoint or a fragmented approach to this, you end up having a completely different pipeline for your infrastructure layer, and that just impacts the entire experience for your application developers who are the consumers of this entire system. You want them to also have a self-service approach for creating the infrastructure that they need for their applications. It also better enables general automation and, and orchestration, as I pointed out earlier as well with the controller pattern, um, and Argo CD is an operator, but it is essentially a custom controller. So you have this declarative and self-healing model for your entire application stack. So if for whatever reason there has been a change, for example, to your DynamoDB database, the live one that is, well, Argo CD is going to be continuously monitoring uh, the Git repository, as well as looking at what has been deployed and what the live state of your infrastructure is. Uh, because there's communication between the deployed cloud resource as well as the custom resource that is responsible for creating that. And when there is a difference, you essentially have that self-healing mechanism through your controller as well. And then lastly is the unified observability of your entire application stack. So especially with a solution like Argo CD, which does have a user interface, you have entire visibility of that entire application stack and seeing the health of not only your applications but also the infrastructure. All right, so I have a few minutes left here, so I'm just going to quickly show you what this looks like. I'm going to scroll to the top. So over here, uh, this is a sample application. It is called Orders. And so what I have here is an entire map, as it were, of the application resources, the Kubernetes-based resources, that is. So here's my, my service. Here's a service account. Here's a deployment. But in addition to that, Assuming that there is a team that is devoted or dedicated to creating this particular microservice and they have specific requirements or needs, they also have a document DB uh, database, which is over here. Here is the DB cluster. And here are the instances for that particular cluster that have been created. If I scroll down a little bit further, I've also, I'm also making use of the external secrets operator to fetch the relevant credentials from secrets manager. So the entire process is automated and managed through GitOps for both the application as well as the infrastructure layer. And if I come over here, you can take a look. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so you can see. So here is Delta e-commerce database. Just to switch back to Argo CD so that you can see that that is the same name of the database here. I'm going to click on that. And with Argo CD, you can also have a look at the desired state. So here's the manifest. You can see here's uh, one particular instance within that cluster, Delta e-commerce DB instance one. It's in the e-commerce namespace. So this is what I had configured or what I had uh, declared. And this is the live manifest. So this is what is currently deployed. So here's my Delta e-commerce database cluster. And these are the specific instances. And this was entirely created and is fully managed by ACK. If I come here, just so you can see, under the tags, uh, so these are, these are tags that are automatically crea uh, created by ACK, uh, just to show management of this resource is through ACK. And in addition to that, you can also use ACK to adopt infrastructure that has already been uh, deployed or is already running in your environment that was perhaps created outside of a Kubernetes-based workflow. And so you can adopt those resources as well. And this can work really well if you want to incrementally make use of ACK in your environment and progressively uh, transition to a Kubernetes-based workflow. And then last, just to show that this is actually working, this is basically the application pulling some data from DocumentDB as well. So. Based on the clock that I'm seeing down here, I only have about 45 seconds left. But I'm going to hang out over here for a little bit. So if any of you have any questions, I'm more than happy to assist. If you're interested in checking out um, AWS Controllers for Kubernetes, it is an open source project. You can just Google it, and you'll probably land on the page there as well. But like I said, I'll be, out, I'll be down here for a couple of minutes. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you may have.